when I was when you were here, yes. up to the late nineties, the Quakers was out in the car park. It was out in the car park, yes. You know that's why yes. I'm. Uh, yes, you see a lot of slightly. this. A lot of this, I think, has changed since. Uh, <coughs> The turnstiles and that, there was the Quakers was in the car park. Yeah. And it actually was closed off through another wire fence. Yes. And yes. then into another car park where you had to go through the turnstiles. Yes. Which isn't, this is it over here, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Starting to yes, and the, feel bit. familiar again. Yeah. <laughs> this here would have been closed off completely. Sure, sure. That's what it is. Sure. And that's. That big gate often was closed. Ah, yes. You, can you get it now? That's the gate there where yes. you come in through. Yes, yes. Uh, and yes. that's, you'd have got a cup of tea. And you would have come, come in through no, there? No, that gate there was closed as well. Yes. We'd have come through this gate. You see, this was the main watchtower. Yes, yes, yes. This is the way they'd radio to the Brits coming in to stop okay. you coming out again. Right, right, right. But that the big gate was very often was closed. Sure. But then both car parks would have been full. You'd have drove in through that gate. Right. In through that gate yes. there. Yes. You'd have come down the bog road. Right. Or you could have come that road as well. Yes. Yes. See, this, this is part unknown of territory. To you. I have. <laughs> You've never I, seen I, it. I, I've never seen this part of the prison. Before. Them gates were opened. Yes. Yes. Funny, I was down here a couple of years ago and keeping them and for peeping through this, yes. I was trying to explain to them. Yes. And then you'd have pulled up here yes. and in through the turnstiles. I see, I see, I see. And your parcel would have been given in. Actually, it's still it's there, isn't it? There's the same parcels. Yes. And you went in here. Yes, yes. And then you know, you can you still get through now the gates over that? Uh, there's a block over there. If that's locked, this one might let us might through. Might let us through. Yes. It doesn't look a lot worse. <laughs> it hasn't changed. Okay, so you would have brought a parcel in. You'd have brought the... No, the parcel was very meagre. Sure. A few apples, oranges. That's right, I remember um, it. Apples, oranges, paper, tissues, soap. And that was about it. That was about it. And the newspapers, of course. That but uh, and then it. in here actually you had to go here with the. So the, you come um, in here. Sorry. You come in here with the the apples and the oranges. Yes. 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 And uh, handed it over. That was the screw checked it. Yeah. And uh, brought it in. now. More than often, there was something wrong. Yeah. yeah. Depending on what form the screw was in that day. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you had to bring it back. That was the. Fr this was the fruit. Papers, shampoo. Sure, sure. Then you went into the other end, out through this door and in through the next door to leave in the clothes. Oh, to leave in the clothes, yes. yes. Now, yeah. this is when the fun started. <coughs> yes. In here. Ah, yes, yes, yes. And they had the different wee sections with yes. your clothes in it, and there was another screw stud behind here. Yes. Yes. And he put the stuff in. Right. Now, very often they couldn't differentiate between the colours and mm -hmm. the sizes. And often you'd have found they mixed yours and Porrick's up. Sure. Which, he's already had his t-shirt in, he can't get the other t-shirt in. Yes, yes. Found yes. it very confusing counting three and four t-shirts for who had got what. Yeah. yeah. But, um, and the time then Porrick escaped, that was... You got nothing. <laughs> yes. That was basically, you know, that it was yes. another means of, I suppose. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, okay. that was the close end, and so then you went on yes. through here. Yes. And then you would have been then taken for a search, is that it? You, this, you had to head over here then. Now that could have taken anything up to half an hour. Yes. Depending on, you know, how many people are what form they were in or of whatever. Of course, of course. And then you went in through this here door. Yes. To hand in the, <coughs> the permit thing that it sent out to. Yes. Go oh, this road again. So can we get in here? Try it. Yes, it's opened. So, um, and 
Yeah. Where was the search? This was the where you put in your permit, and oh, then yes. further down was the search. And further down was the search. The. Uh, so you come in here. Then after you had left your parcel, you come in here and you set down your permit. Yes. And, and they had checked. And then did they, they would have they checked, also your, checked your identification. Your ID. Yes. It was here that wasn't allowed in. That's right. It caused terrible. Yes, per offensive per to per Jimmy. Per Jimmy. It also was here that they wouldn't let Mummy in the morning. The day that you, you and me and Daddy went in that you said you were going on the hunger strike. That's right, that's right, that's right. It left the two of us going alone. You and Daddy, yes, of course. So Does would this be the No, this was the area the this here no no no, this was opened. Yes. This is where you could have left money in. Oh right, right, yes. You left a few pounds in. Okay, yes. And then you went in here. And of course, just watch now, your it's in later years they've obviously put these pictures up. Yes, but there was nothing. Believe like it that. or not, that it hasn't changed. You know, it was as grubby and as dire looking. Sure. To be honest, sure. I, I, there's a bit around the floor, but sure. the floor was the same colour, the same dirt on it. Yes. The ceilings, nothing has changed. Yeah. There's also an emergency exit put in there. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. This must be a play area or something to put over there. But there was seats. You know, like a hospital a waiting room, waiting room. Yeah. and you had your rows of seats all along here. Yes. And then you were called through yes. into the searches. So this, yeah, this has changed. And you would have been called through so here? Then you were called through in there. Male and female, separated. Oh, this is the search area? This was the search, actual search okay. area. Okay. So, uh, yes. And very often you had three females, two males. Right. And uh, you were brought in one at a time. Right. And if you had a small child with you, the child was allowed with you. Okay. okay. But I would have been, what, 10 or 11? Yes. Where I had to start going on my own. I wasn't right. allowed in with mommy. Right, right. right. And at th that stage there was a table here. Yes, yes. Two chairs. Yes. And two females. Yeah. And you emptied everything out of your pockets. Right. Um, there was, to be quite honest, there was many today you'd have come in you'd, and uh, sanitary towels, anything, you'd, you'd, it was very demeaning. Mm -hmm. it, and, and often you were asked to take maybe your trousers off or whatever. Sure. But. Yes. It was all, I suppose, to try and. But this would have taken quite a lot of time then. It did, to, it did. You know, it, it, you got but that's before you, no, well, you actually went to another waiting room, then you took a bus and you went to another waiting room. Right. And then the, if you could sit there maybe half an hour. You know, you'd leave the Moy at maybe eight o'clock yeah. and get into the visit you at 11. Right, right. Where, what took us half an hour for this a, morning. For a 30, yes, for a 30 for a, minute visit. And it was a very scant 30 minute visit. So you would have come through the search you'd have, here. Uh, after you'd eventually, uh, you were lucky enough to get through that. And then thing, you had to wait. And you waited in here. You waited in here again. Until now none of this was here. This has yes. obviously went up. All of the, you're, you're talking here about all these, these uh, cartoon, cartoon kind of things. Yeah. That was all that yellow grubby, yellow wall. Yes. yes. And you sat along here, and you could have sat for. A well, you time. never got out of it under twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. And on a good day, you know, you'd count yourself, you were getting through quick mm -hmm. on the 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Easy could have been the 35 or that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until the, hung the latter end of the hunger strike, when they would have brought you through yeah, on a more direct basis. But that, that was very much the exceptional, exceptional circumstances. circumstances. Very yeah. much exceptional. So then, you would have so then this was a closed off door. Yes. And the screw would have come in through this door. Yeah. Come in. Now, of course, it was, it was like, I don't know. There was that many chains and rattles and keys, mm -hmm. you know, opening, you know, and then nearly an intimidating noise opening mm -hmm. these doors, mm -hmm. and then the called by a number, mm -hmm. never your name first, mm -hmm. you know. So they'd have called my number. They'd have called your number. So there's eight, nine, nine six, six McKerney. McKerney. Yeah. McKerney. They never would have said Thomas, Tommy McKerney, anything yeah. like you know it was. Yeah. Eight, nine, six McKerney. You, which I you heard eight, nine, six. I didn't know. But again, uh, you sat there and you never, you never, you knew eight, nine, six was you, but you never would acknowledge yeah. it. it yeah. Was, yeah. Nor did I. You were not going to be acknowledged <laughs> as a number, you know. <laughs> yes. You had a name. Yes. So then you. So come then you came here. through here. 
and just directly here, you see, never, you'd never have seen that. Yes. Directly here was a minibus with blacked out windows. Okay, yes. And you know, cobwebs mm -hmm. on your jacket. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, you got into the back of the minibus, that gate, some, the, all was locked up. Yes. Which it amazes you then how poor it came out. Sure. <laughs> the amount of it, but sure. the, uh, you got into the back of the bus, the bus was locked off and yes. out through the gate. And, and you went through this gate. Out through that gate. And you, you, after that, we never seen any more. Yes. You know, you, that was the end of it. So this is locked. But so that'll bring you out, and then I think it's up that direction. Okay. We'll bring you up to the blocks and the visiting end. Okay. And then again, coming back, you'd have been dropped here. Yes. And you walked up here. And you went that, out mm -hmm. that direction, yes. Now, at that stage, you still could have been pulled in and searched. Of course. And you came up here um, to collect your driving license, your key, oh, car yes, keys, yes, your, yes, to get those you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. There was different, or if you had sent out an old pair of jeans pair or something, to, you know, you collected like it here. Yes. You gave your name and collected it. Yes. yes. Sometimes that it had two on. Right. Usually there was the one, and as I said, at this stage you still could be asked. To come in to, you could, search. You can, you would have been brought in maybe now and again and searched, coming out. And if not, then you went through a turnstile here. Yes. And out into the car park. And that was that. And, uh, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> they had two British Army. Oh, yes. The Jeep Sanders. things or whatever. Yeah. The, no, no, the, the Jeeps that they yeah. drive. Oh, yes, the Land Rovers, yeah. The Land Rovers. And your bio up here, yeah. obviously radioed through yes yes and you try we've tried both ends both ends coming out yes. but then they started putting them at either end yes and as soon as you come through it pulled you over and stopped and you for a, the car another half an hour that with one particular incident i drove down from dublin that morning to see you and i remember him pulling me over and he says i'm sorry madam but he says i've been told to pull this car for half an hour and half an hour you have to sit you know, so Obviously he no was acknowledging that there was there's no, no reason, reason why it other than other than just to to harass. Uh huh. Yeah. But um, that was basically it then. Yeah. On to the motorway. You know, when you think of it, for what, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah. It yeah. was meagre enough. But that's that's sort of the visiting end that I would have. Sure. And that we never we never really seen that. No, and I, I think most of the, most of us didn't really we 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 had heard about the time it took to get in, but we never really appreciated how long. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Okay, so will we move on now to the visiting? Move on, certainly. Which back again this then. Back this way here. And often you would have come out and taken a cup of tea. You see that thing of the allowing a cup of tea at the visiting only started very late on, you know, it certainly wasn't there in the 70s and 80s. Right. Certainly people like Daddy and that, that had tablets to take and one thing yes. or another, you know, he was yes, glad of the cup of tea. That. He definitely did. <coughs> but this was all blocked now, you never would have seen. This was like these here with the sheets, you know, you, yes. di you didn't see past that. Sure, sure. And directly the other side of that fence is the bog road. Right. Well, obviously this must be. See, the visiting area that I remember best was near to the hospital. And I just don't know where we, we are here. This, I take it to but be this, where this we're is completely changed. Yes, yes. This we is certainly him. didn't see red brick around the no. cache anyway. No. <coughs> no, what we would have went through up there. Yes. I and in a, if you were reversed in. Yes. Through this kind of a gate here. No, I one. think I know where. I, I think. Uh, I, it's, I think it's up towards that it's hospital. It's near the hospital uh -huh. because it was just. Over. And it was a prefab, sort of like what we came out of there yeah. from the first. Yes. 
yes. and you went in and you waited in it. Yes. Now that was the long wait. Yeah. You know, they usually, you were up to about the hour, you know, about yeah. three quarters of an hour. Sure. Now this is different. This is completely different. This is different. And it's... Uh, no, this isn't at all. Yeah, and that's the... This is the control room, or one of the... Uh, presumably it's the control room. Uh -huh. And obviously, I never would have... Seen, I, I never would have been allowed into anywhere like this. Uh, and then... There's the visitor's waiting room. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, which... There's your control room there more, is it not? Well, this would have been one of them, I don't know. The it different one. The senior officer, uh, the okay. SO, as they call them. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, so you had the, uh, And again, another monitoring observation box. Yeah. The actual visiting boxes aren't all that. Well, it was a plain wooden that's top. Right. You know, it wasn't coloured or anything. Oh, that's They were plastic chairs. That's right. Um, that's it wasn't right. as what attractive. Or no, certainly Interior not. wasn't done as well. No, and um, even that, it's still a prison visiting room, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and I take it then you see the prisoner would have come, come this from end. this end. And there's another visiting room. And that's another visiting room. Yeah, A block and B block. And uh, there must have been something up the stairs. Well, there was that another visiting. That obviously is where they'd have taken the... They'd have taken prison prisoners prison. out of here. Well, yeah, this is all so bright and modern. In That's what, you know, it's so... What, no comparison. Yeah, to what we would have remembered. Yeah, yeah, it's just another set of visiting. In fact, this, yeah, yeah, it's just the same again. Same thing again? Same thing again, yeah. C and D, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no difference. Difference at all. Yep. But as you say, it has changed. To the light, to the airiness even, you know, the... Yeah, yeah, it is right. Completely different. Because that was one of the things about my time in the H blocks. We never travelled up a set of stairs. Funny, I was going to mention the stairs. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh... They're, they're just. We didn't have stairs in the prison. Uh, not for. Prisoners, anyway, I think there was in the control room. There was a few steps into the visiting, you know, where you'd have waited. Perhaps. But it yeah. was that sort of a... This, I take it, is where the prisoners come in from, so it's very dark now. This would have been presumably lit with the uh, Light, fluorescent the lighting. We just walked in there and see what it was. And all along here, alarms. you see, all along you'd have had the alarms and they probably as you have in every prison. Um, I'd imagine... Um, it would be difficult to get a photograph in here.
Is that right? Yeah, that's just where the prisoner would have been held on. Undoubtedly. Uh, and uh, yeah, and an observation. Everywhere you have prisoners, you see that's an observation Especially. slot. Were these gates? Yeah. yeah. Then kind? No, that's a different type of gate. That's, that's, uh, yes, uh, that's more modern than. Or, uh, uh, it was a solid? Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, sometimes or sometimes just bars right down. Yes. But that's a common feature there wherever you have prisoners held. Um, yeah, and again, some form of search area. You know, well, it's yes, search area, and with see the call airlocks and stair rails, oh, and yeah, uh, you know, they move people from one to the other. And I would take it, Angela, that you're looking here at um, presumably the minibus. The bus would have taken people to here. Yes. And you see, see the gates as you're talking. You see what they talk about is airlocks and stair aisles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, one gate doesn't one gate doesn't open until the other closed, closes that uh -huh. type of thing uh, now see that might even have been the original if you could imagine that's possible that they drove up there you know look at this for goodness sake apple trees my goodness an apple tree and properly fitting crab apples Act actually <laughs> What else would grow in long cash? Uh, but even the very sight of green in here, you know, it's... Yeah, but of course that's... That's weeds now, but Weeds it's now. And you clearly wouldn't grey. have even had these... No, you wouldn't have trees or anything. No, no. So... Uh, the red brick is... It's yeah, that's, that, that's a different... It's just totally uncharacteristic with the rest of it. It's a different complex. So, uh, let's just walk up to see what's here, because I'm not at all sure where I am at the moment. Right. And I'd be looking for familiar sites, and of course you wouldn't be familiar no, with this. No, not in here at all, because once you left that, after the search, you... Um, you automatically went into the black dive van That's anyway. right, and we're taken. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See five there. That's hardly. See, that's not any indication. Five. No, that's no, It's a different zone altogether from what I would have been familiar with. So it was quite a drive. Yes. A straight drive. You know, she you said you're coming up towards closer to the hospital end of it. Yeah. After you came out of the visiting, the first visiting area. Yes. I wonder is that to the right down to where the girls parked because this would be more familiar with what yes the kind of gates you know if you got a wee duke at all maybe it's not This is, you're right, this is the visiting area. Now, well then, that's. Would it have been in here? I have a feeling could possibly be because we came in and waited. Yes. Then you were taken out. Yes. You know, and looking by the life, that could have been it there. Yes. 
because it was I, very I, closed in, you know, it was very closed. We never got into, I think the only time I got a closed, that sort of a closed off visit with you was the morning we came down that Kevin died. Right, yes. You know, and I suppose that's what it would be more on a compassionate basis. Here they are, here, Angela. That's the more open ones now. Again, they aren't. That's more what we it's would have. More, isn't yeah, it? They would have changed over the years, but. Uh, there was no tea, coffee, or milk. Yeah. But this is more like what mm -hmm. we would have had this, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is it. Doing closed in, you know, the way that's closed completely yes. off. Yes. That's what the outside there was like, and you stood there to another bus route. come again. Yeah, yeah. But this in later years, they actually put up a small um, prefab kind that you could have stood in. Yes. If it was raining or snowing or, you know, in the winter time. Yes, yes. But this, this definitely. But this was more the visiting. Now, this here wasn't there, sure. but it was more this kind of. A but it was, it was like this. Mm -hmm. The tables actually were turned the other road at the start, That's weren't right. they? That's right. That's when right. yourself and Porrick would have been, and then yeah. they eventually turned them this road. Yeah, you would have been sitting with your back to the wall. Mm -hmm. And then we come in and we would have, as mm -hmm. you say, you would have been sitting there and we would have been sitting mm -hmm. here. Mm Possibly that was the, you know, the legal visit type, I think that and then was this the would have been where we would have waited and been processed uh -huh. before been taken through there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, because that was more like the waiting area out here. Yes. And you went in that side, obviously. I would have went in this side, yeah. and then come out. And the bus would have been able to back up to the gate. Yes. There's the steps into. There was a small prefab there that you could have went in and stood in, or up to that it was you stood in the yard. Do you see those lights? Mm -hmm. They, we used to call them the Mexicans because it seemed uh -huh. to be from a distance that it was a sombrero. Uh -huh. And they started, the, it was one of the first times I saw, you know, a slow light. They didn't come on the yes, way a normal yes. bulb comes on. They come on very slowly and they started off a sort of a pale yellow and then went orange before they finally lit up. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the sort of the things that I always remember about this prison is that all of those lights, we could see so many of them and the way they the, the would light up, it was an, it was a very distinctive feature of the prison and very, if you like, for some reason it's always a very lonely thing to see them light up. There's your girl part there, so that's, that's what it's been. That's our car, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we'll take a look at the hospital and the, I suppose, will we just walk up to the Aye, hospital? Probably be. This obviously was the second gate, you, or the time lock thing that you'd have went through yes. for. Yes, yes. <clears throat> because the hospital was a single story block as well, wasn't it? Yes. That's why I'm looking at this double two story. You see, I think that might well have been what they, what they would have called the cell block. I'm not sure now, but see, there was a special, believe it or that not, the they board. had to that's the board. Oh, right. but believe it or not, there wasn't, they didn't believe even that the H blocks were in themselves sufficiently. <laughs> Enough. Sufficiently severe. So how much, you'd have, obviously with the hospital, when you'd have went quite a bit further again yes. to get to the H blocks. Oh, yes. No four or five. Aye. Sort of like a ward more? Yes, yes, 
four, five and beds. Possibly for theirs. And you see, this was, a, this was a great luxury in Long Cash because there's, there's, there was no in cell sanitation. So the fact that people staying in this cell overnight, there have been at least four beds in this, in this room. When I was here in the hospital, that uh, snooker. snooker table wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, at some stage, this has been turned into a recreation room. My time in this was a four person ward, but the luxury of it was that you could use the toilet at night, which was unheard of because there is no in cell or was no in cell sanitation in Long Cash. Now, that room over there, that's the canteen where, or the, or the, the, mm -hmm. the association room. Now, remember, all of these grills were cleaned all up at this time. Uh -huh. And at a certain stage, prisoners who were in the hospital were in there. Uh, this was the kitchen where, because the hospital run a somewhat more relaxed regime than the rest of the place, the MOs or the medical officers would have made you a cup of tea, or some of the orderlies, prison right. nurses who were doing orderly, made a made man a cup of tea, but they'd have prepared some, not, not the meals, the meals were prepared in the, in, the, in the prison cookhouse, but they'd have made a cup of tea or something like that in there. Now, uh, that's, that we were still, in most of the other cells, mm -hmm. we were still slopping out, and mm -hmm. that's the sluice there for slopping out. Now I'll tell you what happened. Uh, that's the bathroom and these cells you might effectively call them cells and or wards but they don't look like wards now the last time you met me in here Indeed. this is the this is the this is where i was Angela, that and the last time you saw me in here you were about that was, size. <laughs> that's possible <laughs> i was would have been your first few days of 1981. This is where I was in this ward here on hunger strike. And um, you were advising me to bring you in chocolate, did the dark chocolate biscuits. You didn't possibly, like the light chocolate. Possibly, possibly. I remember uh, there would have been a, a, a locker, a locker to that side of the mm -hmm. bed, and mm -hmm. maybe chair on that side. That's right, the chair you were allowed to sit to this side. And uh, visitors would have sat there, which was a big concession to mm -hmm. allow visitors to visit prisoners in the cell. Now to me, this particular cell, although it has to, to an outsider, this looks a fairly restricted area, and you still have the bars in the window. But to me, coming from the cells in the HBAC, yes. this seems yes. to be an enormous large size. comfortable <laughs> bigger room. window probably even is it no, no about the same, same size. size but it's it's not as high up it's more comfortable mm. to look through and uh, i was here in this this cell here uh, by the time the hunger strike ended of course i was quite ill mm -hmm. and it took me a good few days to get over it but um, i remember party coming up to see me here he was brought into. He was brought into this room here because he was in the Crumlin Road. That's right. He was in the and they brought him up here to see me, and mm -hmm. that was a few days before the hunger strike ended. Because I remember for the last fortnight or ten days, mm -hmm. I was getting a visit every day, mm -hmm. and I thought it was because there had been a a, a a loosening up in the Northern Ireland office, and they had saw the light, and they were becoming much more liberal. I didn't realise I was so close to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I took it that this was a marvellous, marvellous gesture for the, the NIO, but instead... I remember Porrick saying that he, th he was convinced, he was contented that it was the last time. I, and I didn't know that for a long mm -hmm. time afterwards, just how ill I was. Um, I'm nearly sure that's where Tom McFeely was. In, or maybe it was Brendan Hughes. Maybe that was, it was maybe Tom McFeely, and I think Brendan was over there. Because Sean McKenna was in there. Was in there. Sean was in there. And then we had um, Leo and Leo Green, Raymond McCartney, John Nixon in the other rooms. Mm -hmm. And I just can't remember what for the life me at this stage yes. now uh, which of them, who was where. 
but uh, they were in some of those rooms there. Uh, now, uh, at this stage, obviously the, the second hunger strike then is the one that's more awful and the boys would have died in these cells. Mm -hmm. As a matter of interest, now I, uh, on one of the visits they told me where each man died and seemingly they've lost the definitive record as you could well imagine. Mm -hmm. But the last time I ever saw Robbie Sands, he was standing at that door, he had come down to see us and I was still in bed and I couldn't, my mm -hmm. eyesight was still bad and I, 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 I knew the voice I recognised his voice more than I recognised his face, yes. but out of the shape, of course. But I remember him saying, how are you, and I spoke to him. And that was the last time I saw Bobby. I remember, um, we used to every morning, we moved here on I think the 45th day of our hunger strike, because for the 45, for, 10 days we were in the H block itself in the ordinary mm -hmm. routine wing. After the 10th day they moved us to a special wing but in the same block. And then on the 45th day, which would have been 10 from 45 is 35, so we were 35 days in that special wing and then we were moved here. But I'm nearly sure 45, it was, it was about, I was only here a couple of days or maybe only one day when I, my health deteriorated seriously and rapidly but I remember I was standing in there mm -hmm. and I was I was I, I was I think I, I wasn't slopping out actually I think I was waiting in here to give a urine sample because they were taking measurements of us routinely and I was being weighed every day they would weigh us they would take a, a, a blood and urine sample <coughs> to find out how we how our body was. They, that was the medical authorities. But I remember I was giving a urine sample and I that I, 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 I just went, went out. out. And uh, what I do what I was fortunate in the sense that there was uh, two of the of the medical officers uh, were with me. And I can remember their faces and I can't remember their names. Paul and Cormac were their first names. And I remember all I remember was coming around in a wheelchair because the two men had caught me as I fell, luckily enough. The two MOs caught me, got a chair and put me in it. And I remember being wheeled back to the, to the cell yes, and I opened my eyes and the world was black because I couldn't see my sight had gone. And uh, I was in serious trouble thereafter. I didn't get out mm -hmm. of the bed after that. I, um, and until the, the whole thing was over. But that's, that's, that's where that happened. Uh, Other than the hunger strike, were you in the hospital wing? The only time, no, I never was in this hospital. The only other time I would have been down in this block and I would have been here several times but I would have been here, say, the dentist was here. Right. And right. Were opticians are. The, no, the optician really wasn't a big. Th yes, you would have come down here, I think, for the optician. Right. But it was more for the dentist. And the dentist, wherever he was around here. And the dentist was a bit of a, a, bit of a penance because you were, you see, you were held, there was a waiting room here. And you are in prison, remember. So you were. You were kept in this small room here, and this was the waiting room, and you would have been held here with the door locked. Mm -hmm. Now, fortunately enough, there was a there was a toilet in the corner, but you would have been kept in this room. There might have been five or ten men in here, and waiting, and then we'd taken out one at a time. And um, I remember one incident. It was shortly after the protest had ended and we got the clothes and uh, there was a, <laughs> there was a character here and I'll not mention his name but he was determined to prove that he was a solid staunch republican but he had just been sentenced and had no 
or very little Irish. But he come down here and invariably the blanket men, the ex-blanket men, spoke Irish because they didn't know who else was in the place and very often you could have had loyalists or even civilian prisoners. And there's a number of us speaking Irish one to the other and this man was determined to uh, let the rest of the world know that his, that he, who he was. So he jumped up and said the Hail Mary. Shed the wrong word. And there was such deep running cynicism. <laughs> <laughs> more black men that they really just put their heads down and said, where did we get this out of? But uh, I can't remember which of those rooms, Angela, but some of them you would have had the dentist surgery and probably the optician, oh. things like that. It was somewhere around here. Uh, yeah, and you'd have had dispensaries and things things like that. Do you know? Radiation. But I do know this was the theatre or certainly the x-ray room. Now, uh, most of my time here, they didn't actually, I don't think this was, was very extensively used for a simple enough reason, because breaks, you, you only really use that for breaks. That right. They actually had the facility to carry out an operation in here, right. but they didn't because um, at the end of the day, I think they found out that um, x-raying a break is something really that has to be done by yes. people who specialise in it, uh -huh. rather than medics. So they would, they would do that. And I don't think it was used very often in my time. And that contraption there is the pad itself. It's a gruesome spectacle. Imagine putting a human being into that there and keeping them in this room here just because they're mental faculties had went. I don't Isn't know if it was used that often, to be honest. So it was just the fact that it's there is an appalling thought. Isn't it? Well, we move on. Mm -hmm. Looking there, I don't see a chair, dentist chair, anything in any of them. No, so well, I'd say a dentist chair, as far as I know, is a fairly expensive piece of equipment, so it, be taken out? it probably would have been taken out. In fact, we had one very good dentist here at the time of the hunger strike, but uh, I think we soon replaced him <laughs> with less talented. A lot of this, you see, that would be an admin mm. area. All wiped off it. And wiped off, and you see, always you get the, the window observation slot. Remember, you were talking about grills. That's the type That's of grills, the, the more, more common one, one that I remember. With. The gates, this, it was the outside one closed, then this one open. But the van come up here and let you out, and that was your first sort of knowledge of the blocks but as you got out of the van you see the boys and all the along the windows there could see who was getting out and sometimes they knew us and sometimes they didn't that's if you were just being newly yes. committed but after a while then but um, <coughs> and all of course all of these grills would have been we call them grills but they would all have been closed and um, you see you'd have had the well, of course, the lock's off now, and this would have had to have been open for you. And you'd have come through here, and then you'd have been, you'd have stood here, and this would have been closed, and then that was locked from a, see the prison officer outside there? This was, and then another screw would come across here and open this. And believe it or not, we always call this the circle. Right. And basically the reason this was known as the circle the circle is a term that has come from the older prisons, mm -hmm. the Crumlin mm -hmm. Road. Yes, where, where it was the, an actual It was actually circle. a circle. Now, there have been some slight changes since I was here, but in my time, that would have been the principal officer's room. The PO would have been in there. Um, then, that was the... Uh, this here would have been the screws canteen. 
this in my time would have been used as the governor's office if the governor had to see you know, if you had any business with the governor now the furniture seems to have changed a bit but usually the desk he would have sat across here now there's three desks here but usually he would have sat here the t desk would have been out and you'd been marched in to screws either said he would have marched marched in and you had to stand to attention while you'd done your business with the with the governor now very rarely very very rarely would you ever see what we call the number one governor that's the man in charge of the whole complex usually you dealt with assistant governors I think that's probably a power room or something I'm not sure what's in there yeah, 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 it seems to be, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, the canteen. Now, I think in my time that room used to be used for the, the welfare probation. So if you wanted to set a change of visit or something like that, you could have come out and talked to probation and asked them. Right. They would have contacted a family. Uh, now, Again, if I can remember correctly, in my time, yes, that's the medic's office. For you, if, see if you had to get, or, or the doctor's office for that matter. So if you had to get medication or examined or anything, that was your first protocol. Very rarely right. did you go down to the hospital. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, this is basically. There maybe fellas like Pat or that that had trouble with the stomach or something. Would have been out here regularly. Out here regularly. And you could come out for occasionally <coughs> now, I'm not sure what way that weigh skills works, but there used to be a way in skills and because if you can think of it, we weren't encouraged to weigh ourselves for our fitness. Mm -hmm. The authorities weighed us they wanted to see what weight yes. we were. So by and large, what used to happen, now I'm not sure what type of thing this works on, but usually the scale would have been around the other side on, on some of these and things like right. that, you know? And the, um, I'm not sure just how it worked, but I remember on one famous occasion, um, a friend of ours from Stewartstown was very concerned about his weight. But he, invited, he, he brought one of his friends out to monitor his weight. And Liam constantly read off the wrong... Added to it. Added a, a, a stone. <laughs> um, I don't know what that was for. These were uh, for the staff, male and female. Where's the, the monitoring room? And where, that right. not been here as well, wasn't it? In my time, it was here. Ah, there's the door blocked up. Now, that door has been blocked up since the escape. Mm -hmm. uh, but there used to be a, a grill on it. Yeah, that's, you, there's the door, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Now, what happened was during the escape. Tea bags, 5 pH. Yeah. Uh, the, the, um, at the time of the escape, and why it changed was the, all the keys of the block were in there. Mm -hmm. So one of the, one of the boys, one of the IRA boys come across and put a gun in and ordered them to hand out the keys and one of the prison officers refused and he was shot and then they got the keys out and opened up and once they got the control room, they controlled the block. Now obviously the report that was conducted into the whole escape decided that this was too big of a risk. So it meant then that the prison officer in charge of the control room was hermetically sealed away from this part of the prison. And I'm not sure. Uh, presumably you get in from somewhere else now but, uh, that, that changed thereafter now when you were brought in this was the first place you come to into the circle you were stood here and I remember when I come onto the blanket I was met here by the PO and the PO asked me what I was doing and then actually made me strip in the circle and sent me naked down the wing now that I am I.
should be the education room where classes were held. Now bear in mind that again that all these were locked, locked. Uh -huh. and yet another prison officer in there. So for prison education, this room here was for prison education. And then I don't know what this is, to be honest, what this here is. But this was where uh, most of the education would have classes and whatnot would have taken place because you're still to a large extent within the wing and you're not in a you know you're not in the circle or anything. But again, these are all observation hatches now that one's blocked off. But you're coming here in. you're coming here into the wing and again all it's of this all is locked always, again. always locked. And the, the, this is, is just the so you'd have stood here before that was opened again. Yeah, this locked that was up. locked, and then that would have been opened up. And you never. This was where we spent most of our time. Now, again, these are all blocked off. Those are the ablutions in there. Now we didn't have these uh, doors or whatever. doors or whatever you would call them in my time. This place was just open, and uh, there was just this is. The urinal you washed there, three or four showers and a bath, and that's basically, and this hasn't changed really apart from from these here since since my time. And that's where you would have washed your clothes. The men would have washed runners and that. It's not that's not the sluice for the slop out. The slop out's down here. That's just a thing, if you guess. One of these had an element in it. In there, there would have been. Yeah, you see down there? Mm -hmm. That's just an ordinary sink. This one here had a, an electric element for a hot boiled, you boiled water for washing dishes and what like that. But, we used to have here then, always along here was what was called the hot plate. Now it was about, you know, about that length there and it was metal and just as the name suggests it was a, it was a hot, not an oven that you could cook in but it kept food warm mm -hmm. and it was a large piece of thing and what that happened was the meals come up from the, canteen, from the cook house on a lorry. I mean that's how the escape happened because the boys captured the lorry. But the food come up and it was brought in then on a, a sort of a big trolley and they come up in hot cases. That there, there were metal cases that kept the heat in. Now they weren't they weren't that warm but yeah. they kept the, the, the food and they were shoved come in through the grill and the boys would have taken out the trolley the containers of potatoes and stew and custard and that and put them into the hot plate. And then whenever the prisoner the prisoners come to eat, there was tables all up and down here. And you come in and you just formed a queue along here. You come in that door there through that grill, you formed a queue here and you stood and you got your plate of food and you went down, you ate it down there. And this place was full of this is what it was. Now this was also the the recreation room. Right. So when you were let out at night there was a television down in the corner and you could have watched the television. There was a, a dartboard and there was, there was a few other games that most people didn't play, drafts and things like that. But most people just come here to talk. Aye. Or play a snooker. Snooker was always very popular. Now this was a big, big concession here. This size of a table. Because for a long time there was only a wee small table that was pretty useless. Now I never really bought playing snooker, I never could get the hang of it. But a lot of lads were very fond of that. But again all these grills were closed. So How you long could, would you have got in the evening? Uh, from half five to I think it was half eight. The doors opened at half five. Now in the summer now in the summer you could maybe get out to the yard. This is a multi-gym. Uh, 
this is, this is just as it says, this is come in in my time. Now there's something has changed here. I can see a, a turnstile to let people out and there's a telephone box. This was all, this, this is all new to me. That wasn't here in my time. Tell the idea of telephones. What was here actually, this was the slop house. Right. When you brought your poe and emptied it out there. Now not dump it into the yard. There was a, mm. there was so a, the turnstile, that's obviously that's been all out been into the yard. That's all pushed through and knocked out there. That wasn't there in my time. Uh, this was still the, the multi gym. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what's known as cell 26. This is, was a larger cell. Now, in cell 26, something is. This type of facility wasn't here in my time. Cell 26, I think, originally was intended for the orderlies. Right. And orderlies are the people who. Uh, would serve the food, their, their job in the prison. In theory, all their prisoners would have went out to the workshops to work, but the orderlies would have stayed back and they swept the floors and give out the food and kept the place neat and tidy. And the idea being that the orderlies would have used this cell, four orderlies in this cell, because they had to be released earlier in the morning. So they would have the breakfast ready and right. they, they had a different routine on occasions. But it never really come to that. We, we never used orderlies in that fashion because we mm -hmm. shared the workout. And cell 26 become the meeting room for the prisoners. Right. And you'd have had meetings, all sorts of meetings took place here more often than in the canteen because the screws found it harder to monitor what we were saying. And this was the, this is the famous cell 26. Uh, and after that, the cells are pretty much the same. Uh, in my time, you very often cell two was used for the class office, or the prison officers used that. That was like what they called the class office. Right. Depending just how many people were about. But it's just another prison cell. All the cells after this are the same, and the same size. And I was going to say, you can notice the difference in size as you made the comment about the hospital yeah, cells. Yeah. Now, the, uh, as time went by, when I was first brought to the blocks, yeah, that's in cell sanitation, one of those. Uh, and that's what the boys hold is called a, ga a water gallon. I, I take it there's probably five litres or something, it was a gallon. But um, in my time, we didn't have that type of built-in cupboard, but it's not greatly changed. But the, the cells haven't changed. The windows are higher. Uh, when I come here first, invariably, we had a double bunk, two men to one of these cells. Not one, but two mm -hmm. men. And uh, the lights have changed. There, was, there used to be a light up there. Uh, and the, uh, those are the pipes. Uh, you'll notice, if you take a look down there, that there's a metal plate. Can you see the metal plate yeah. there? Now, these are the pipes. What, do you see the metal plate? That metal plate in there that has been, uh, that's welded or riveted into the wall. Now, the reason for that was that prior to the plate going up and while on the blanket and on punishment, the boys got plastic knives and dug out the cement round the pipes and then they would send through notes messages. and tobacco and messages to one another and they used to, we, it was one of the, the, the uh, great values that we got from the Bible which every prisoner, God bless the British system, but every prisoner has to have a Bible and they couldn't prevent us having a Bible. You don't, they don't have to feed you but they have to give you a Bible and we got the Bible and you take a, a long strip off the Bible and you flatten it out and you put sprinkling of tobacco. If we could get tobacco, we'd get a sprinkling of tobacco, roll it up and push it through. Or you'd even push a light through on a wick. And how you made a wick was we had uh, any piece of cotton towel we could get and you take the string out of the towel and you unloosened it. 
and made it into a wick. And then we used to use a, we, we would smuggle in a flint from a lighter and a small piece, you know, the tube of a, of a biro, the inside mm -hmm. of the biro mm -hmm. where the ink runs, mm -hmm. piece of that and put the wick or the, or the flint into the top of that. Make a wee bit of cotton and set it down on the floor and then get either a wheel from a lighter. You just took the wheel out of the lighter, you didn't mm -hmm. get either the wheel or a piece of a razor blade, the tiny sweet piece of a razor blade, as long as you get a spark, you get the spark. Flick, 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 one, two, that would light up. And once that lit up, then you put your, your wick into it and got the wick lit and you had a wee spark. And I seen them coming right down from self to two, right the to the bottom, down. down the wing. And men would have been smoking just a sprinkling of, of, of tobacco. Now in my time, the windows, the glass was gone. In the blanket days, the mm -hmm. glass was gone. All of this was gone. There was no cell furniture, but only two of these. No pillows or anything like that. Three blankets, two mattresses, two chamber pots, a gallon of water, and the Bibles, and two plastic mugs. Our men used to stand on the pipes here like that and they would shout, not necessarily to their friends across the yard, but they would shout up to the boys up and down the wing, or they would go down, if it was the next cell, to, sh to talk in. Very often men spent hours with their head up against that wall talking. Other times they'd be out the window. And the other great one was, now the thing about it is you could have a relatively private conversation. Yes. News sometimes during the blanket days travelled, well often travelled up and down the pipes, but it never was too reliable. Because f the famous story that is told is, uh, because bear in mind that although there's a lot of Irish spoken and a lot of Irish learned, the, the, the standard of Irish wasn't universal and some mm -hmm. men had a better knowledge than others. But there was a, an incident where, I'm not sure whether a train or a car, something, something happened around Kilna Sagart in County Armagh or down wherever Kilna Sagart is. But by the time the word had got down the pipes to the bottom, the word was out that somebody had killed a Sagart, which <laughs> a uh, had killed a priest, which is a very different, different thing <laughs> totally all, different. altogether. But that was one of the famous stories. But the other way that we used to do a lot of conversing was from behind the door. And actually, I spent a lot of time on the blanket uh, doing what was known as lects or, or lectures in Irish history for the unfortunates that listened to me. But I would stand, because we were never out of the cell, mm -hmm. and I would stand behind the door, and because there's a chink in the door, I'll just make sure this thing, do, no, it won't lock. But I would stand behind the door, and the door was locked, and I can't, and I would just shout, stand here and shout out the side of the door. And my voice, my voice would carry. Now, I very rarely, you see, the, the, the authorities really copped on to a lot of these things, so the, the troublemakers usually were kept either at, at either end. <laughs> and I usually spent the time at the end of the wing. And I had to, my voice had to travel up the whole wing. Uh, very often I'd have been around about 18 or 19. And I'd have been in shouting for all I was worth. Up and, up and down the lantern from behind the door. Yep, you'll see it there. There's a small chink at the side of the door. God, it's and this is, this is where I would be standing. Shouting out. And the first word you shouted was, Yes to go! Listen. Listen, everyone. And then the, the boys would listen. Some of them. So it was H3 then that you and Porrick sh shared a cell? Uh, in fact, it might even have been in H4. Was it? I thought I was wondering, was it? Because it probably was in H4. And if I remember rightly, we were in one of these end cells. And that was the double bunk? No, no. Nope. Oh, yes, a double bunk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two man cell up and down. They really only changed that after the escape because they felt that two men in a cell give too much cover. Uh, and how long were you together in the cell? Well, only maybe a, about maybe a couple of months and all. It wasn't Aye. that long. No, but it was a while that... Oh, we did. Well, yes. we, we had a while. And then there was other times we weren't in the same cell, but we would have run into each other on different occasions. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Um, again, this is the yard, we would then. never have been in there. That was patrolled by the, the, the this is the, the yard. Now in my time, this type of uh, corrugated iron was across that one as well. We didn't, have, we didn't have access to both yards. Right. We only had access to this yard here. Whichever wing you were in, you had access to the to the yard. There was a yard for each wing. Yep. And this was all across here, blocked off with that type of corrugated iron. There would have been across here and across there, and that was a sterile area that only the prison officers could access right. from the circle. So this was our yard and I suppose in some ways our world and we played football and men would have run around it and that's what we had. Now we had access to this, uh, usually the day started at, I think it was about eight o'clock in the morning the doors would open and the breakfast would have been already in the canteen and then depending on the regime but then they would ask for a head count at nine or 10, mm -hmm. and a head count, I mean, obviously in a prison, everything is is centered around security. So before they would let you out in the morning, they'd come around, they lifted those flaps and checked how many were there, and then they'd call back the numbers to the circle, and then the circle would send in word, unlock. So the doors would be unlocked, and you'd, first thing most men done, up obviously, was slop out, go and wash, and then get their breakfast, and then there would be another lock-up for a head count. Now the regime's changed over the years, yes, and yes. at other times then they didn't do this, but y you would be sometimes locked for a head count for, this was five minutes, and then the yards would open at 10. I mean, you wouldn't get out here at eight o'clock, you'd be out here at mm -hmm. 10, if you were lucky. And sometimes you see, before, before they would allow you out to the yard, the circle had to say, let them out, to, had to give permission for, the, right. to, for us to get out to the yard. And before the circle would get permission, they had to get it from the control room. And there could be any number of reasons why you wouldn't get out here. One of them was fog, obviously. But the other thing, there's the Mexicans, I'm telling you. But I was the, looking at them around the... But the other thing, the other thing was the... Uh, all depending, if, the, if the, for any reason they thought there was a security risk, they would, they you you didn't wouldn't get have out access either. to the yard. Uh, and you'd be out... It was, t it was usually 10 to 12 at best. That's, that was if you weren't working, you see. This was after the escape and we weren't working. But um, then from 12 to half 12, or sort of thereabouts, you got your dinner from 12 to half 12. And then the, <coughs> the, cell, the doors were locked from about half 12 to two. You were in your cell again to two unlock at two, back out to the yard. But you never, you usually wouldn't have got out to the yard like at two, you'd have been 10 uh, past yeah, two before you got out. And you were then there to, uh, to about four. And four you were brought in, your tea, four to half four, locked up again at four, released again at half five. Uh, you got out at half five and then there was tea and a bun uh, or a biscuit for you. When you got out at half five, you could take that any time Mm -hmm. But uh, the, uh, you were called in, the, the yard wouldn't open to six. You were let back, taken. Now, this was, the yards were only open in the evening in the summertime. Right. Because they see they were, didn't let you out in the dark. But in, the, in this time of year, you would have been out from six to eight. And they called you in at eight. Now, they usually made sure you were, they were calling you in from about ten past, ten to eight. Mm -hmm. And you had to, this door had to be closed again at eight. And between, you had from eight to half eight to get yourself if you wanted another cup of tea because there was always boiling water up there. Mm -hmm. That was while we weren't on protest. Different thing, the protest was different. You never got out of the cell. Uh, you never never left the cell. And it was a it was a different world altogether because bear in mind the, there was the slop out, the boys used to empty the urine out through the bottom of the door mm -hmm. and smear the excretion on the walls and that. But I always remember the first time I, I was sentenced late December and I just managed to get on the blanket for Christmas and I was in one of the bottom cells I can't I was always seemed to be at the end of the wing 
because there was always an added problem of the wind coming into the door. But it didn't matter because we had the windows knocked out, so there was wind, wind and snow and all was coming in. But Terry Clark, Cleeky, was at the f at, at the very end cell, and I remember it was Christmas, at dinner time on, on or dinner time midday on Christmas, and the see the screws you see would, once they got us locked up, they kept the skeleton staff on over lunch, and they went off for their for their dinner. Mm -hmm. So there was, the place was quiet from one to two, and uh, I remember clearly that first Christmas, Terry Clark standing up, and he was piddling to say to the door, and he said, there's not another prison in the United Kingdom where the inmates are standing on Christmas Day pissing out the side <laughs> of the door. <laughs> that was the, that, that's when I got the, um, you see, this was the, that's the flap there. Now, you'll notice here somebody has painted that out so the screws can't see in, but that actually would have been a, that's an indictable offence in a prison. You would have been mm -hmm. taken off to the boards for that type of thing. Uh, somewhere here. There's one there that hasn't been. Have you got Can you see through it? Yep. Yeah, you well, that's what that. you'd have heard in the mornings when there was no protest on you'd have heard this. Now, that's now, depending on who the officer was, some of them deliberately would have come along doing that there, and you'd hear this clap, 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 clap all down the wing. It was a, dread, a deadening sound. Others were decent enough and they'd have lifted it and they'd set it down sort of decently. But then here, there always was a wee. Uh, we piece of timber up here into which they could slot a card, which right. was your, your card. Now, if you were moving from wing to wing, they'd have taken that along with them. And on that was your number and your name and your sentence. So you'd have got some men, eight years, and then also earliest possible release. Well, mine, you see, didn't it say life, mm -hmm. 20 rec. So then there was no, obviously, there was no release date. No release mine. date for you. Uh, this was your... To a large extent, this was your world. As I say, the blanket was different. See, on the blanket days, the uh, you were moved, you were moved here every so often to the rotated around a clean wing, mm -hmm. and the, the the blanket a move was a really dreaded thing, because you were taken out at most you had a towel on, and you were walked up the land, and you were then you see there was the search, and th this was for. Maximum was brutality. Everyone taken out at the one time? Oh no. One Just one time, at a time. One at a time. You had to come walking up the land and with a towel naked except from... Uh, and a towel, I'm not talking here about a bathrobe, I'm talking Aye, about a hand, a hand towel. towel. Linen hand towel. Not a, not a woolly one, a linen, white, sort of a linen hand towel. More, more, more like a, you know, a tea towel nearly. A tea towel. So to say you were going to that wing, you weren't too bad. Because you, they would have got you here, or more often than not, that have got you and taken you in here. And there have been 10 screws standing around, you know? Mm -hmm. And that a mirror, one of those mirrors that you see in there, size of one of those, you see those mirrors there? Yes. That a mirror that size there, taken off, and they had it into, into, surrounded by a piece of foam, and you had to squat over that so that they could view your backside. And we simply refused to do it for them, so then they started to beat us. And the beat men, they just walloped and battered and beat men anyway. Uh, and then you see you were sitting in the cell. It was always a dread. You didn't know what exactly to expect. And sometimes mm -hmm. they were worse than others. Uh, Sunday morning mass, they, they would search you before you went out and things like that. Uh, then there was the, the search. You see, you was always cell searches. So you never know when they'd come walking into the cell and the batter men on the cell. Uh, vicious and brutal time. Uh, but the worst move then, of course, was if you had to move from, say, this wing across the circle. Because the longer the move, the worse it was. The more search. And the, yeah. Well, it, you didn't get more searches, but I mean, it just, the more, it was the, the more, more screws. More time for them. See, but there, was the a, there, was a, there was a screw here and there was a screw there. And you see, it wasn't just a question. You didn't have to do anything. Just gratuitously as you were walking by, it would just give you a wallop. And at each gate here, it'd be locked. You were live, yeah. Each one you were live no, for the, the same sort no, of as that? No, sometimes, depending on, depending on the, 
how they read it. Sometimes they would just they would just hold it like that, and they'd let you through, and some screws would say, "Go on ahead." I mean, it wasn't they weren't universally mm -hmm. evil or anything like that. There was some good and some bad, and a lot of them were indifferent. Only just wanted their day's pay, but there was some of them took a took a vicious pleasure in doing what they'd done. Uh, and I remember my first wing move. I come to the circle and the PO was here. And the PO said to me, right, get down over the mirror. And I said, I'm not doing that, you know. And he says, right, take him back. And what they done was they, they grabbed me by the, the ankles and the arms and they turned me upside down. And they run me back like a squeegee from here back to my cell, right down the landing. He was an armal man. And uh, I remember him, uh, he's since deceased, was in charge of the block. Nasty bit of work. But uh, the, th the thing You is basically wouldn't treat a dog like it, would you? You wouldn't. You know, you, you don't. You think of but uh, things changed actually after the escape and they changed for the better because the system was so challenged and upset mm -hmm. by it. For a start, they, they took us in, we were, all got, we all were put into single cells. Now, that was for security mm -hmm. reasons, mm -hmm. but they decided to put us into single cells. So the thing was, if you have two men in a cell, one can say, I didn't know that was there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to prove. But if you're in your cell on your own, you, you really are you're, responsible uh -huh. for what's in it. That was one. Two, you having the same autonomy. What it meant as well then, that the wings went down from having 40 men on a wing to having Half 23 yes. or 24 uh -huh. men on a wing, which was easier for them to. To, to manage. And the other thing they done was they said that, because invariably what the IRA do in prison is the words that you don't talk to the screws. I mean, if you need a visiting pass or mm -hmm, something, you go mm -hmm. up and say, can I get a visiting pass? But you don't stand ta chatting with them. Nobody mm -hmm. talks to them. And the screws before the escape made it easy for us because they were nasty, they were aggressive, they were offensive, and they invariably used your prison number. Mm -hmm. But they were instructed afterwards to open up and try and develop a relationship with the prisoners. Right. And various prison officers come down and, I mean, I, I, I was taken aback at first and they'd be saying, well, Tommy, how are you and what are you doing? And some of them would stand around. Now, I never really had any great warmth with any of them, but because of that, there was the, 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 the actual, the atmosphere relaxed. Rel yes. And there wasn't the same aggression because they decided it was counterproductive. But there you have it. Um, there you have it. I remember being taken to the boards one time I was to go to court and uh, <laughs> What, this would have been on the remand or after no, the deposition? No, it was after I was sentenced. Right. And I can't, <laughs> I can't remember for what reason, but the, the, they wouldn't give... Usually when we were moving to a visit, they, they put the prison uniform yes. on us. But on this occasion, they decided to move me just in the trousers. So, but the thing about it was it was snowing. There was snow oh. on the ground, and I had to come out through the door. And I remember a lot of the... the uh, our lads in the wing were looking out and they started to, they started to laugh and, and cheer over at me. I was standing with a, just a pair of, we called them strides, but just a pair of prison trousers had no shoes. No, just the trousers. <laughs> just a pair of trousers. And the, the snow. And the snow all around me getting into the back of the van to go to the boards. Uh, we we'll we, we'll just walk to the oh, gate no, here. Oh, see it. Uh, and, uh, Would there have been many on the boards? Ah, there would have. For no apparent reason. Ah, well, there was some, there'd there was have been some reason for it, but never. I mean, nothing not, major. Nothing major. The odd time somebody would have punched a screw or something, but usually it was trivial enough, caught with a bit of tobacco in the cell or something like that. You know? Those are the, those are the workshops. These all? Yeah.
Now I can't remember, some of them were for timber, some of them for metal work, some of them for, you know, there was the carpentry workshops and there was metal workshops and things like that. There were, uh, there were supposed to be, the theory was that you would be doing gainful employment and through it possibly learn a trade. But there never was enough work and it was, it was to force you into conformity was, mm -hmm. the, was the idea. That's four. On the blanket, four had a bad reputation. A lot of nasty prison officers about it. Uh, now, men would have actually walked from here to the visits. Uh, again, those are the, let's just say, the prison workshops. Uh, See that C over there? Yes. These were divided into zones, so the authorities knew where you were. Uh, these are what I believe the called stand down huts. The prison officers, you see, would have been. I mean, they weren't always. If, if there was no, nothing moving through the gates, they would have been put a stand in there and make themselves a cup of tea. Maybe I'm not sure. But uh, that's H five. There's H3. Now, H5, believe it or not, in the days of the blanket was regarded as one of the easier regimes. Now, not, nothing was easy, but slightly easier. H3 had the reputation of being quite a nasty place, and I can vouch for that. That was a nasty... Well, was it the same... Same layout. Warders were, were on each. No, no. You, when you say one was harder than the other, what what, 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 you see, what determined, what determined the makeup of the block really was the principal officer, because that block is right. run by. And he stayed the same. And he stayed, well, he would have stayed maybe for a year or two years. Right, right. Now, uh, there was a man over there, uh, had the reputation, and I mean, a pretty decent fella. Right. Right. was the PO over there in H5. Uh, we had a series of nasty thugs in here acting as principal officer until, having said that, towards the end there was a, forget the man's name now, a big fellow with a beard come on to do principal officer and the atmosphere changed dramatically because he tightened up things that he'd done. Simple things was, he said, one, the ration. See, one of the simple ways of hurting men on the blanket was to cut their ration. Mm -hmm. Now you're not supposed to do that but instead of giving them a full ration they, they give them meagre rations. But this guy come along, I forget his name now, should know it, big strong fellow with a beard was the PO towards the end of my time here before the hunger strike and he insisted that every man got his ration. He insisted that if they wanted to go to the doctor that they got out. He insisted that we got what we were entitled to under prison regulations, which made a change, and he did not supervise brutality. Now, it happened when he wasn't about. Mm -hmm. But how effectively the prison authorities, how they manage violence, is they appoint a man who they know will do it. They never tell him to do it. Yes. They allow yes. someone in, and it's, it, they, they, they after know, thereafter know that it will be done. That's A-wing, B-wing, C-wing, and D-wing. That's the where I was for 35 days of the hunger strike, hunger in, there. strike in there. In, in there, and this is, this is H3. And there was someone in the cell with you that time, wasn't no, there? No, I was on no. my own. On Only your own the, first the first 10 days, days the first 10 days, I was over in that wing for the first right. 10 days, but that was the old simple blanket wing. There's no point going in there all the same. We'll just do the last walk here and then we'll go, is that it? Right. Okay. Where are you? I'll just show you the football field. So it was different to the yard you were allowed in? Yeah. And when were you allowed in the football well, when field? when the protest, you see, once the protest ended, well, the, the wing was given, you see, you got to the football field by, you know, each wing and each block was entitled to go to the football field, access football field and or the gym. Right. Now, usually if you got once a week to the football field, uh, 
you'd have been doing well. Yeah, I think we went down that way to the visits all right. Uh, so, um, that's the football field. In there? Yep, that's the gymnasium there. And there's two football fields there. Uh, you'll probably, I think you can see, there's still goalposts. Or, yeah, there's goalposts down below here. And a tarmac. But it's an all-weather pitch. Aye. It's an all-weather pitch. And, and, and that's effectively what they are. So if you come around here, you'll, you can see the other blocks. So when was the gym used? Uh, on the same basis, on there was a rota with, with the gymnasium and uh, some men didn't play football and some men didn't use the, the gym and there was a small multi-gym in the, in the wing as well. Mm -hmm. But in the gym you see you could have played basketball or uh, indoor football, there was different, different uh, facilities. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Angela, that building That's there... That's the chapel thing, is it? It probably is. I never was in it. it? No, it's not because I didn't. You see, we, it, it, they it deemed it a security risk in my time. Right. And, uh, I mean, I never remember Now, going that. by the map that was shown to us there, Yeah. it looks yeah. like it. Yeah. You see, religious services in my time, all my time, were held in the wing. In the wing. Uh -huh. In the canteen. Now, um, those are more workshops there, I think, but I can't remember really them being used or what they were used for, to tell you the truth. So what about these wee huts have been then? Were they... They weren't there in my time now, to be honest. So, uh, possibly education or something, I just don't know. Now, let's see if I can get my bearings here. So this will be heading toward what, H6, H7, You're looking is at that? H6. Yeah, no. Here we go. That should be H6, 7 and 8. Let's see if this is 7. And was it one of the... I, this, is, this isn't the old age. What's this? The army singers, the... Some of those would have had army and some of them some of them had army and some of them had prison officers. Uh, now if we can find seven. Yeah, because there's one of the blocks there, hit yet. You could look out under the out under the tin and see the uh, and see the boys playing football. Right. Now if I'm not mistaken, this should be seven, Angela. H8's wrote on that. That's H8. So this is... Now, if this is seven, and the significance of seven... Sorry. No, you're all right. Is seven is where this... looking around me. It's closed. Oh, no, it's not. There's a gate into right. it. That's where the seven. escape took place. That's the escape there. That's where the escape took place from. How long was it before you were moved out? The escape took place a couple of weeks, was it after? Why, oh, yeah. So that's seven, as I said, they're all the same basically, but it's just uh, now those are the those are the cooking utensils. Or not the cooking but that's how the, 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 food, the food would have come yeah, in. The food would have come up and thing and things like that there. And uh, I mean, that's one of them. I don't know what peas or something might have come in that. You know, you might have whatever, something like that there and wheeled in and then they put them Meats into the... Or things. And you did know, that there and I see a lid, you know. To be honest, uh, it's the only reason here is because it's a... It's where the escape come from. OK. 
Okay. Okay. Just watch your feet. Now, um, you see, that's where the PO's office was. And how effectively the escape took place, I suppose, was because of the relaxed atmosphere post the hunger strikes. And a lot of our boys were out here doing orderly. Mm -hmm. And they'd have been out sweeping the floors and washing up and doing that sort of thing. And what happened was they just planted strategically that somebody was in the principal officer's mm -hmm. room talking to him. And there was other men around here and men on the, at the, to cover the gates. And then at the signal, they captured the circle. They captured all the prison officers down the wings. And they captured the, the control, control room. And what they did was, you see, how they captured the gate, which was very, very, very important, because bear in mind, those gates were closed. Mm -hmm. But what they did was they had established a routine of the boys going out because there was always a prison officer between the gates. Yes. He was to open and close the gates. Uh -huh. And he was left there for a couple of hours at a time. So you would maybe, what the boys started to do was they used to go down and bring him down a cup of tea. Right, and right. they would have swept around and they would have emptied his dustbin. Now, they actually, the screws found this uh, amazing, amazing after the pros had been in a hunger stick and all this, that they, they were tickled. Mm -hmm. intrigued mm -hmm. that they were doing this and didn't realise what was happening. But eventually what happened was on the day they see up the boys walk down, a couple of them walked down and they just held them up with a gun. And they, they took their clothes and they put one of the IRA into a prison officer's uniform and waited down there. So when, you see the grub, the food come in a, it was a big truck mm -hmm. and the food come round and the boys let the grub in and brought it in and brought it in here and when, the, when they were wheeling the food in boys just captured the driver and forced him to drive out. But that's effectively what happened. But as I say, the block itself is the same. Same as the others. The only real significance is that we're in H7 where the escape took place. What was it like then after the escape? Well, the place was just locked down for two or three weeks. And the, the boys that were recaptured, a good number of them were, were badly treated. But uh -huh. the rest of us, I didn't notice any huge difference, apart from the fact that we didn't get out of the cells and that. Uh -huh. But um, it was only slowly that they started to introduce the reforms, which were security. Aye. Based rather than anything else, but I say, in a lot of ways, it did make a, an improvement. The the cell themselves, even you, you know, you've seen footage of it yeah. over the years. They, they are almost, you know, they are almost claustrophobic when you walk. You're very small, very enclosed. Yeah. As I you talk there about two men, like you cut. You yes, you're two. To imagine two men on the blanket. Yeah. Cons twenty four hours a day in there. Yeah. It. Well, you couldn't imagine it. That's to be honest. You can't imagine it. You know, you can just. I think that's what most people find. That they haven't been in the blocks how small the cells are mm -hmm. and the amount of time people had to spend in the cells. You walked in, I'd only ever previously seen the inside of the hospital wing cells and you, mm. they seemed small, mm. they seemed, you know, to actually walk into the wings themselves. I remember talking to a German journalist that come down one time to see it. And the thing he said about it was the actual size of the whole area. It's such a vast expanse of ground. 
and mm -hmm. there's so many buildings and of course then the cells are so small yeah but he was not astounded because he had seen other prison complexes and much more notorious ones actually than this but he said it was just the size that you have to keep in mind it's an industrial site almost yes for, for processing a political problem mm -hmm. 